Thank you, Father Becker, Reverend Fathers, all Vienna visitors, any other honored guests, and lastly, my brothers. I have been blessed to have known many good and holy priests, all of which inspire me constantly to love Jesus and his people. Choosing a priest to honor today was very difficult, and I think I have surprised myself with my own decision. I met my priest hero about six to seven months ago while I was at home for the summer break. My first encounter with him was on the side of the road outside of his rectory, while a man, who was obviously living out of his car, was trying to pull a Marian statue from the back to give to Father. This is when I first met my parish's new pastor, Padre David Garza. So Padre David is obviously a Hispanic. He's from Mexico, and somehow he ended up in Big Stone City, South Dakota. Um, actually, he knew Bishop Carlson from St. Louis, became very good friends with uh, Father Jim Mason, Father Scott Trainer, um, Father Kevin Zilberberg, and all three of those priests and Bishop Carlson are now out of the diocese, and uh, Padre David is now stuck in South Dakota in the cold by himself with no friends. So <laughs> it's a really funny story. And uh, it, it's just, yeah, I know all, the, all, all of those priests and the bishops, so it's just funny that I can meet, like, the fourth guy out of the, out of the group and, um, and know him. So this is about Padre David. I am always impressed and humbled by Padre's profound generosity. The day I stopped by to see him, he paraded me around his new rectory, showing me off the changes that he made, all the while pointing out antique spiritual readings and telling me that someday, when I'm ordained, he will give me that copy. Um, these are priceless antiques um, that he got from who knows where. Um, but he just flippantly just says, I will give this to you when you're ordained. Um, which is so, I was just thrown away. This is the first day I met this man. And he's already thrown me uh, $100 books um, or promising that. And it was just, I was very taken aback at that. Um, and then another time, uh, of another example of his generosity, after Mass one time while I was talking to some parishioners and um, my own father, um, Padre stopped and looked at me and asked, uh, do you have a cope? And I looked at him and I said, no, I do not. <laughs> Promptly he said, ah, wait here. Soon he was back with not a liturgical co uh, cope, but a clerical cape that he was willing to just give me because he had an extra one, and he thought that I should have one. Uh, <laughs> so now I have a cope. <laughs> this type of generous, generosity is very touching to me, because his actions definitely speak louder than his words. Because after most masses, when I am at home, he'll make a final announcement and say, and this is our seminarian, and we must pray for him. A man as good looking as him goes... <laughs> goes through many temptations in seminary. <laughs> and so we must pray for him because he is ours. I've never been talked about in that way, and it really does make me feel like I am part of the parish in a much deeper way than just where the money comes from while I'm away studying for the priesthood. Padre David has made my own vocation to the priesthood very real and present to me by his example and by his uh, generosity of prayers and gifts. Um, even though his gifts are definitely not, not needed, um, they're definitely the, uh, very appreciated. Um, another characteristic of Padres that I would love to, love to share with you is his love for people. Um, this is seen during and after Mass. He knows everyone by name in the parish. It's a small parish, about 80 families, but he still knows everyone's name. And he greets them by their first name, their full first name. A woman named Pat, who I have only heard anyone call her Pat, and I've never heard of anyone calling her anything else, he calls her Patricia. Um, he can do that because he's Padre. <laughs> when he distributes communion, he looks at the recipient and says, Tom, the body of Christ. And he does that to every person. He says their name, the body of Christ. It's very touching and moving. After Mass, everyone gets an affectionate handshake. So an affectionate handshake is a handshake with a, with a hand on top. Everyone gets one of these. 
with this big smile from Padre. Um, and the women are not afraid to give him warm hugs. Um, he's just a very affectionate and generous man. Um, and once at Christmas, during the sign of peace, Padre shook my hand and affectionately slapped me across the cheek. Um, I did not see it coming. And <laughs> apparently that was his uh, just saying, well done. Uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I've never felt more like a child, nor the Father's love for me, than, than when I encounter Padre's love for me. Um, I, always, I definitely feel like I'm eight years old, and I've come home to my father's house. Um, I, I always have an Im image with Padre of just kind of sitting in his lap, looking up at his face, and just listening to him talk and tell stories. Um, I've, only, I've only gone to lunch with this man twice, I've served mass with him, and I've known him for seven months, and this is the type of imagery that this man has evoked for me, just because of his affectionate love that he, that he expresses so generously to everyone that he, made, every, everyone that he meets. Um, and the other thing that strikes me about this love is that I've never seen so many people in my church um, smile um, after mass. It's, it's insane how many people are so happy to see Father, to greet Father afterwards, to greet me afterwards. I mean, his final announcement about, you know, our seminarian can only go so far, but they are very, very um, excited and warm to me as well. Like, you can tell that the parish is being transformed by his love. Um, lastly, Padre has a great devotion to the Eucharist. When we all kneel during the Mass, every, everything waits for the miracle of miracles. Padre says the words in the Mass with such care and devotion that time stops. The expression upon his face is one of pure joy and reverence. The elevation of the Eucharist is extended for a huge amount of time. One cannot but worship the Lord, our God. He kneels to our Lord with such great devotion and care um, that the first time that he said Mass in my parish, um, when we all bow to reverence, uh, the Eucharist, they're kind of waiting. And my dad looked up and he thought Padre left because he was kneeling behind the altar. He's a sh very short man. And then he pops up again. He was like, it just, it just took him a long time to kneel, apparently. But that's the devotion that he has to the Eucharist. He, hold, he holds him for a great, great length, just staring at the Blessed Sacrament. Just, you can tell the love and devotion he has in his eyes and his face. And the bells cannot ring slow enough. They're always, always, like, at least it feels like five minutes behind fathers. It's like, it's insane. And then he genuflects, and we're still waiting in this moment. Like, just time stops. It stops at these masses. It's been truly an incredible experience. Um, yeah, as I said, time is special there in St. Charles Parish. With nothing to do and nowhere to go, you just can be with the Lord. Um, I explain to people that Padre David's masses are a lot like the Shire. There's a, there's a homeness um, to his masses. There's a peace about them um, that I've only experienced reading the scenes from the Shire with the hobbits. Um, I'm, I'm being honest. Like Reading those, those scenes in the books, there's, there's a warmth there. There's a, there's a joy and a simple, simpleness. And... Um, the only other time I've experienced that is during his Mass. Um, it's, it truly is a, a, an incredible experience. Um, Padre is so devoted that I do not doubt the effect he will have on his parishioners, my family. It's very exciting for me to come home and know, or to leave, I should say, leave and come to seminary and know that my family and the people I've grown up with are in very good hands. Um, there's a saying that goes, if the priest is a saint, his people will be holy. If the priest is holy, his people will be good. If the priest is good, his people will be fair. And if the priest is fair, well, I forget the rest. <laughs> Brothers, I believe that Padre David is a saint, and it brings me much joy to follow his example of prayer and devotion. Brothers, I hope all of you are able to meet this priest someday. He truly is a priest of Jesus Christ. Praise be Jesus Christ. <laughs>